Hi everybody, I'm Mark Basenberg. I'm the volunteer coordinator at Williamson County Animal Center. And welcome to our first at attempt to put together some training videos for our dog walking volunteers. Um, we've put together a, a, series, we've, a series of videos. You, you can watch them uh, in sequence, which is what I would recommend the first time anyway, but we've set them up as individual videos so that you can go back and refresh your memory or just watch one at a time if, you, if there's just one that you want to take a look at. Uh, I want to thank Carla Gentry and Morgan Plunkett, two of our lead dog volunteers who have uh, uh, been willing to serve as the on-air talent for the, uh, for the videos. And we we're tried to set them up in a, in a sequence of what happens when the volunteers come to the building. So we're going to start the first video is a description of the dog walking board so you'll understand which dog you should be taking out for your walk. Uh, then we're going to move into the kennel area and Carla will show how to operate the three different types of locks that we have. That's a very important uh, thing to know uh, for your safety and the dog's safety. Um, then the next one is beginning the walk properly or owning the walk we often call it where you're getting the dog out of the kennel properly with you in charge and not him dragging you down the aisle way. Uh, then the next one is uh, Carla's going to show some uh, leash skills that will um, benefit both you and the dog. It'll make your walk more pleasant and it'll make the dog more adoptable ultimately if he has uh, nice leash skills and shows well on a leash. Um, and then finally, we're going to do a video where Morgan and, uh, and Carla uh, are playing the role of uh, one of them as being a potential adopter who has brought their dog from home in to do a meet and greet with one of our dogs that they're thinking about adopting and um, we want to see how they get along together. So first one, let's, let's go ahead the first time and watch them in sequence. Let's start with uh, Morgan Plunkett going over the dog walking board. So here we have our dog walking volunteer board. So if you notice here, all the dogs names are listed and there are numbers listed on the kennels. So if you notice that the dogs names are listed in different colors, that's because we have an apron system here at Williamson County Animal Center. So we have red aprons, black aprons, and green aprons. So those represent the level of difficulty of the dog to walk and the level of experience of the volunteer. So you're only gonna walk dogs with the same color as your apron. So you guys coming in as new volunteers are gonna be walking red dogs. You can come to the board, look for a red dog. What you're gonna do is look to see who hasn't been out the most recent. So whoever kind of needs a walk. So if we're looking at this board here, it looks like of these red dogs over here, Apple or Stuffing, oh, looks like Stuffing might've gone on at 115. So Apple could use the walk first. She'll come to the board, check to see who needs a walk the most. Then the next thing that you're gonna check on here is gonna be this column right here, so the restriction. So this means the dog is on leash restriction. That means the dog cannot go to one of the play areas and play off leash. So they may have been neutered, spayed, or have something else medically going on that they can't go outside to in a play area where they could run around and bust a stitch or something like that. Um, our next column is gonna be our house train column. So if you see the HT, that means that dog is house trained because they tend not to mess in their kennel. So if we have a night where we don't have enough time or in the morning, those dogs go out first because they are house trained so that they are gonna be holding it. So pay attention to that. And then also the numbers, that's where the dog is gonna be in the kennel. So all the dog kennels are numbered. When you get here, you'll see all the odd kennels are on one side, the even kennels are on the other side. Over here we have our isolation kennels. So one through five, I believe, are gonna be accessible for as overflow kennels. So if we have dogs listed here, you'll be able to have access to them. These ones are some of our dogs in the back that are more experienced volunteers are gonna go to. So you're not gonna have to worry about those dogs are walking past those doors. If we don't have enough dogs, those are gonna be shut off from adopters because um, we don't want people going back in that space if we don't have to utilize the space. And then what you're going to need uh, right here, so we have some poop bags you can grab to put in your aprons. We usually have slip leads hanging right here, so this right here, that you can grab. They're also on the dog's kennel, so they're in baskets. If there's not one in your dog's basket, you can always grab one from a different basket and just use that one. Um, we all share. It's okay. So if you notice something with the dog, um, we have protocols for vet checks. So 
We have a piece of paper. When you're here, we can show you exactly where all of that is living for you to fill out, but you fill out a piece of paper um, and then you'll put it in a chart. And that way that our vet on staff, Dr. Birch, knows what's going on with the dog. Rather than telling a staff member or another volunteer, which you're also welcome to do while you're here, we wanna make sure that we do that procedure to make sure it gets to the proper people. Oh, so walk time. So here you can see all the columns here for dog walking. So we have a little basket of markers right here. So you're gonna mark before you get the dog out usually. I mean, if you wanna come through with the dog in your hand, you can, it just gets a little bit you know, difficult with the dog over here trying to write over here. So you'll write what time you're taking the dog out, not what time you bring the dog back in. So you'll mark it on the board. I'm gonna take this dog out at whatever time you're writing. Um, as you can see, this has been done all day and writing it in the correct, um, category on here for these grids and then take the dog out and then you'll put him back in and then the next person will know the last time the dog went out. Okay so this kennel door is already open there's not a dog in here and it's one of the odd ones okay. okay. It's very important to remember with these first two kennels these are unique and different they're the only two like this it was like a little bit of an experiment these two open this way like this the handle flips like this. They open like this and like this. It's important to always open the door inward and not outward, otherwise you're inviting the dog to come out on you before you've leashed the dog up. So push the door in. To lock it properly, it goes like this. If you don't put this carabiner clip on these two doors, the dog from inside can bounce that and you have a loose dog. And that's extremely dangerous in here. So we always wanna use this carabiner clip, looks like this could be any color, lock it, and make sure that clip is on there. So on this kennel door, it's important to be mindful that this little T here is always sitting over this bar. If this little T thing here is not sitting over this bar and it gets jimmy jawed or something, then the dog from inside can rattle and jump on this enough that it will bounce open. So it's always important that it looks like this when it's properly closed. So to open it, you simply do like this. It raises all the way up and you can push it in like that. Okay, yeah, so this is the complicated one. So this is a weird lock. It's, um, it, there's a pin right here. If you can zoom in on the pin, you have to raise this thing up here. This little doodah here has to be raised up. And then you pull this pin and you may have to even use two fingers like this to pull up to release this pin in here. Release the pin and it moves both ways, like that. You let go of the pin and it catches. If the pin doesn't catch on the middle little piece there, if it catches like that, it's not right. You can kind of bounce it back in sometimes, but not always. So if I let it catch like that, my dog is gonna get loose. It needs to catch only in the middle, like that to be locked properly. Did you see where the pin caught? Okay. So I can do this both ways. I can open it in, I can open it out, make it swing both ways. All the way in, all the way out. I can open it from the other side as well, but that needs to be caught in the middle by the pin and you need to shake it to make sure it is secure. Carla has already entered the dog's kennel and she's already leashed him up. Now she's setting the tone for the walk by establishing Herself is the leader. She's not letting him burst out at the end of, uh, of the leash and come bursting out. So she's, she's putting herself in charge here. Okay, he's ready. Now you'll notice she immediately puts, her, puts the dog against the wall and her body between him and the kennel doors. And that's to prevent the, uh, the dogs tend to bark at the kennel door and then sometimes the one will walking down the aisle will lunge at the dogs behind the kennels and you can end up with uh, nip noses and lots of drama and lots of noise so she's doing a great job of positioning herself between the wall and she's also keeping the leash very short you'll see she's using both hands uh, keeping very good control of the dog inside the kennel area now she's going out into the hallway same thing keep the dog uh, against the wall she's maintaining the fact that she's the leader. And now let's go outside and work on some leash skills. Sit, sit, good. So we have Finley here, my favorite little hound. 
Um, and she has, she's wearing a slip blade. This is a British slip blade. Um, and I should have one on me, but I don't. This has um, a stop on it, as you can see. Nope, Brit nope, Finley. Nope, Finley is, doesn't have a lot of patience. Nope, can't fight with her. So the British slip blade should always be up high around the ears. Um, the stop should be down. It should be pointing towards me so that it can slip. Sit. Good. Otherwise, it's not on properly. If I'm on the opposite side of her and this wasn't on correctly, this would be catching and going the wrong way and not catching correctly. Sit. Finley. Sit. Good. So this is a short, slack, short, loose leash. It's short, but I've got some slack on it. So when I say short or slack leash, I mean short that you have control of the dog and some slack or loose leash, meaning it's not tense or tight. So I want it up high around her ears here on her neck. I don't want it down here um, on her thicker part. I want it up here high around her ears. I want it loose, meaning no tension on it, but short that you have control of the dog. Preferability that she's here beside or behind you, I can do that by, come. Nope. You know, also you prefer to correct from a loose leash, not a tight leash. And you do that by making some turns so that you can create some slack on the leash. Um, she's going to put some tension on the leash by pulling and doing what she wants to do, but I'm going to try to create slack on the leash by doing some things I'm going to do to create slack so I can correct her. And correct her by some little corrections, and then creating some slack, correction, turning, turning her, turning myself. And we call it a 180, and a 180 is simply a turnaround. And the turnaround on the leash is so that I'm putting myself, I'm allowing her to pull a little bit so that I can create the slack, so that I can then put myself in a follower position, her in, uh, my, her in a following position, myself in a leadership position. Does that make sense? So I'm putting her, I'm, allow, I'm gonna allow her to pull so I can create what I want, allow her to make a mistake, kind of planned failure. I'm gonna allow her to pull so that I can set her up to fail, correct her, turn around, put her behind me, then I'm gonna walk my hand up the leash and then not allow her to pass me. Finley's hard to keep her attention too. She wants to look at everything else in the universe. And the high school's dismissing right now, so that's gonna be a little challenging, but we'll give it a go. I'm me. Good job. Nope. Uh-oh. I'm me. Good girl. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oftentimes I'll use my feet or the sound of my feet, and I'm trying to help her stay engaged with me. Nope. Uh-oh. very challenging dog to walk actually she's very challenging this is not an easy dog to to practice this on which is actually why I chose her I <laughs> mean I use the word on me a lot and I do that because I usually I feed if I'm gonna have some milk bone treats or crumbs with me I feed in the sweet spot and the sweet spot would be right here on my hip and I would say on me and reward sit I can't do that for her because if I give her food she loses her <laughs> It's not good for her, so. So this is a Jedediah, and we're gonna let him meet Wiley. We're gonna see how he does with his um, doggy skills. We're gonna hopefully let them meet. We don't want them to meet face to face, so we're gonna hopefully see if they're gonna do side to side meeting. Um, let them kinda see what they think about each other and just do a little bit of a walk along and see how that goes. Okay, here we go. We don't want too much tension on the leash. So we're good here. Okay. Is 
Yes, I'm just going to light a smell as we rear in. There you go. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Good job. Try to avoid tension. Oh, too much tension. I'm going to turn around since he was putting too much tension. Come on me. Good job, buddy. Good job. I'm gonna turn around so he can just try to incidentally. Ami, is that a diet come? Come, come here, buddy. Good boy. I'm just gonna try to create a moment so that he can kind of circle. Hey, Jedediah, come. Jedediah, hey, buddy, come. Here we go. Bring Wiley in. Come. Nope. <laughs> nope. This way. Nope. <laughs> okay, we'll walk again. Nope. Too much tension. Yeah, if you can let him come on up and sniff, that'd be good. There you go, good boy. Good job, buddy, good job. Nope. Good boy. So we've determined these two gentlemen would like to play. So we're gonna let them have some off-leash time. Shh. We're gonna remove the slip leads and place clip leads on them so we don't have anything choking. Um, also, the slip leads can loosen up and fall off. We want to have something um, clipped onto their collars that we can step on, and that's um, going to be a clip-on leash that will drag. Um, the, uh, we don't ever want to have a prong collar. If you get stuck in the dog's mouth and damage or hurt, um, or a slip lead or anything like that. Slip leads are, I mean, we've used them before for meet and greets, but preferably a clip-on leash to their collar. Try to request the manners at all the thresholds. Stay. Nope. Nope. We don't know each other, so he doesn't know what's expected, really. Nope. Shh. Nope. Good job. Here. I'm going to lead him in. I'm gonna take away space at the gate by simply walking into his space. Claiming space from a dog is simple. Um, you simply take their space away by walking into it. Nope, nope, see? That's how I took the door away from him. Nope, I wanna block him at the door by blocking. Nope, good job. Okay, then I'm going to walk all the way to the other end and give Wiley a chance to get adjusted and come in and do the same. Come. Come on. Good job, buddy. Also, you'll notice there are no toys in here. I've removed all the toys. Anytime you're introducing two new dogs that don't know each other, you don't want to have anything in here that they can um, be possessive over, fight over, um, any resource guarding, anything like that. So we've taken all the toys out. We just want to see how the dogs interact together and what they're going to do with each other.
And I also want to mention that um, Morgan here is with um, Global Canine, and she's with the Global Canine Experts. Is that right? <coughs> it's, uh, <laughs> Morgan started out here as a volunteer, and then um, was here with a class with Global Canine, and ended up working for them. Yeah, and now I work so, with them in the Canine Experts department as a trainer. Let's go. So we are pretty fortunate to have her here with us today. Let's go. So I'm going to let him get busy up here sniffing something else and just drop the leash. And then let her do the same at some point. Like that. And we have water bottles. We have pet correctors. And we're just going to walk around. See how they do. And we'll slow it down if it gets too crazy. Hopefully they're just going to do dog stuff. Come this way. Wiley responds really well to the pet corrector, to this little guy. Come. Boys. Come on. You want a treat? Good job, buddy. Good job. Wiley, come. Good boy. Jedediah. Wiley, come. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Nope. Sit. Hey, Daddy. Good job. So, basically, for a household for these two would be a little high end. You never want to adopt a dog that's got a higher energy level than you do. Um, you want to make sure that you can stay on top of their energy. So these two are going to play hard together. So you want to make sure you have enough property and room for them to play. If they do that inside your home, that might be a little crazy. <laughs> Obviously, once dogs get some energy out, they're going to settle down and be calmer together. These are two males, so they're going to go at it a little harder. Um, but, uh, yeah, stay with your energy or a little lower. You want to be able to stay on top of your dog. You don't want to have to get a dog that's going to be dominate you <laughs> with energy and obviously these guys can play hard so they played well together but they played hard so there you have it good deal